Hey guys, welcome back to another custom campaign for Age of Empires DE. With Persia conquered, Alexander looked eastward to the lands of India, said to have been conquered by the god Dionysus in primal times. Although the Macedonian king had lost many men in his previous conquests, Alexander's adventure in India would prove the most dangerous. India would take most of his army and perhaps even cost him his own life. In this three-scenario campaign, fight Porus on the banks of Hydaspes, battle the Malians down the Indus River, and go on a journey through a hostile river delta with Nyukris. Okay, so this, this campaign seems to be filled with lots of names that I cannot pronounce, so let's get into it. Hydaspes River, May 326 BC. When Alexander entered India, he sent messengers to the kings of that continent, demanding that they bow before him as they had bowed before the king of Persia. While some kings submitted, others defied the young Macedonian. Porus was among those defiant kings. As lord of the lands east of the Hydapsus River, he guarded the way to the Punjab and the hearts of India. If Alexander were to conquer India, as the god Dionysus had done in primal times, he would have to defeat Porus along the banks of the Hydapsus. The two kings, Macedonian and Indian, faced each other across the river, the coming monsoon rains threatening to turn the waters uncrossable. Alexander knew he had to make battle quickly, or the rising waters would stall his campaign of conquest. Objective, defeat Porus before the monsoon rains make battle impossible. Okay, so I guess it's going to be some type of timer. Alexander has a fixed number of troops and must defeat Porus quickly before the coming monsoon makes the Hydapsus River uncrossable. Although he cannot train new units, Alexander has brought resources to improve weapons and armor. Choose the technologies that make sense for your strategy. With a limited size army, a combined arms approach is necessary. Make tactical use of unit counters and terrain to even the odds. Scouting is crucial to victory, not only to identify useful terrain features, but also to determine weaknesses in the enemy position. Porus has organized his line with his elephants in front of his infantry and archers. His army is flanked by chariots. Okay, so elephants, infantry, and archers, and chariots. Remember Gagwamela, where, where Alexander's cavalry struck the Persian flanks and feigned retreat to draw the enemy cavalry away from the main battle. Remember, too, the Battle of the Persian Gate, where Alexander encircled his enemies and crushed them from the rear. After conquering Persia, Alexander turned his attention to India. He invited the kings of Gandhar, a region straddling modern-day Afghanistan and Pakistan, to submit to him as the new king of Persia. Omphius, king of Taxila, submitted, but other rulers did not. Over the coming years, Alexander subdued the defiant kings with the aid of his Indian ally. By 326 BC, he had brought his veteran army to the banks of the Hedapsus River to challenge Porus, king of much of the Punjab and a longtime rival of Omphis. The Macedonian army was composed primarily of the famed Phalangites who fought in tightly packed phalanxes and were supported by various auxiliary troops, including archers and slingers. Alexander's elite companions served as heavy shock cavalry. Against these Macedonians and Greeks, Porus's Indians fought in a distinctively eastern style as archers and light infantry supported by elephants and heavy chariots. While the battle would be hard fought, these differences would prove decisive. The lightly armored and poorly trained Indians would be defeated by the disciplined Macedonians. Alright, so like always, Hardest difficulty, and let's play. Oh, need to zoom out again. Oh, so this is this army here: is composite bowmen, scythe chariots, war elephants, and broadswordsmen. Yeah, oh, oh, crap! He is an artifact. Um, okay, so we can do upgrades for bowmen, slingers, phalanxes, okay, scouts, and cataphracts. Okay, okay, so. Oh, wow. What's over here? Oh, another scout. That's interesting. So I guess we can get behind somehow. What would be nice is if we somehow could get the slingers to engage. The archers. So let's use the scouts. Just kind of figure out how many scythe chariots they've got. Okay. Not too many. So kind of what we... What I kind of want to do, okay. So slingers aren't going to be too useful now. But we're going to come over here. We'll use, we'll follow the hand. And we'll get the scythe chariots come out and chase some guys over here. Okay, and I guess probably let's do the attack because it will benefit two 
types of units. Let's just scout in front of their lines too. Those ones over here will be a bit harder to draw out because they have that little forest to their side. Okay. So what we'll try to do is use the cavalry, or the cataphracts even, okay, to draw... Oh god, this pathfinding. <laughs> oh, what is this pathfinding? We'll set the infantry up on this hill here, get the archers behind them, and then just have the cataphracts kind of run there and back again. Actually, no, we'll set the infantry up at the bottom of that valley there. Okay, and we can do cavalry, infantry. Archer armor probably won't be useful, and that is more. Uh, get one of them. Try to draw the slingers out, so let's do, let's do infantry army. That's mainly the guys who will be doing the fighting. Alright. Hopefully, I have enough time for this. Or I can at least capture one of those war chests. Okay, now that I've spent half the time just getting my army to path across the river, I'm on slingers, you can do it. Okay, this is so much worse than the original pathfinding. What is this? Ah, oh, okay. Oh, uh, right click scroll again. All right. All right, we've got everyone set up. Hopefully. We'll be fighting like right on this hill. And I'm gonna hope that hint didn't lie to me. What are you doing that there? Right. Let's go cavalry. Not quite work how I expected. Oh, he's got elephant archers, too. Let's fight on this hill. Okay, I think that went pretty well. Okay, what we need now is the slingers to attack those composite bowmen, please. And the elephant archers. And you guys to attack the elephants. Ah, that right click scroll is really getting to me. Okay, now let's take the top of the hill and fire down with the ballista, which hopefully will not die. The slinger is just concentrate on the elephant archers, I guess. You go there, run. Falling sin down on the elephant archers, 800 years. If you don't die like that. Get the war chest, stop the timer. Yes, okay, we stopped the timer. Oh, okay, we, we reset the timer, which is just as good. We'll be good on time now. I'd like for them to attack the infantry. I think all my slingers are now dead, as are all of my ballista. Stay on the hill. Okay, now let's get you to safety now so we don't have to worry about that timer anymore. Alright, off to a good start here. Oh yeah, my ballista is still alive. Get them on the hill. Totally saw those corpses and thought all my ballista had died. Okay, uh, so I guess we'll just try to do... Use the cavalry. Bring a few of them forward. Oh wow, those archers have a really long range. Let's get them towards the hill. If you have some health, you can do this. Let's just let's just fight. I think we're we're bigger now. Just just go at it. Let's try to focus the infantry with our archers, I guess. Yeah, now now we're owning. 
It's the last thing we gotta worry about though is the, the scythe chariots. Let's get the scouts involved. I mostly just need to stop the archers from killing the rest of my infantry, and I think we'll have won this. That's got kind of this damage from it. Okay. Now we'll get the monsoon. Oh, he's going to run away. That guy doesn't have enough HP to kill him, does he? I'm gonna have to chase down one unit. <laughs> Alright, there we go. GG. That's a fun battle. We got that on the first try. Alright, so when Alexander asked Porus how he wished to be treated, the defeated king replied, Treat me as a king would treat another king. Impressed by this regal response, Alexander allowed Porus to retain his lands as a friend and vassal. Victorious, Alexander planned to continue conquering eastward, but his exhausted army had had enough. Having spent nearly a decade on campaign, they pleaded with the king to return home. Alexander had a difficult choice to make. Alright, nice. 94 to 37. Oh, and they had the largest army. Look at that. Oh, and they had more. They had more technologies. Oh well. Ooh, look at that timeline. So that was a fun one. Um, I guess we'll get into scenario two in the next video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later.